fellow Falcoholics. What is up? Welcome to another episode of the Dirty Birds of Bruce podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Knight at Falcoholic Kevin, here to bring you the next episode in our Falcons roster preview series. We are on to the offensive line today. Interestingly enough, the one position group that I didn't find a volunteer for to get covered. I can't believe the offensive line. You know, everybody loves the offensive line, right? It's one of the strongest positions on the roster. There's, you know, we got the same five stars. Maybe that's why but nobody wants to talk about it. It's actually somewhat straightforward in terms of discussion. Uh, this is, it is, it's true. It's one of the more cut and dry, straightforward positions, at least in terms of the starting five. But I think it's it's still got some interesting stuff to cover in terms of, you know, what do we expect from Matthew Bergeron in year two? Uh, can Caleb McGarry continue his sort of upswing in play? Can he be trusted in more pass protection situations all these types of questions you know what's the long-term outlook for jake matthews drew dahlman uh, as well as the depth pieces because we do have a lot of new players coming in we've got some depth to discuss here as well a lot of stuff to get to on today's pod so we won't waste any time getting into this one before we start want to bring you guys a real quick word from our sponsor once again bet online folks bet online is your number one source for all your sports betting needs this season including baseball golf soccer right up to all the top fights in ufc mma and boxing no matter what you're getting in on guys bet online's got you covered with every stat every matchup and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played i know nhl just ended that was a dramatic ending to the stanley cup there uh, we saw basketball and we saw the NBA draft conclude recently as well. Uh, but no matter what, when the game's over, guys, you can head on over to Bet Online's online casino. They've got online blackjack, online poker, or you can unwind with one of their over 150 online slots games. So what are you waiting for, folks? Head to that website today, Bet Online, to get in on the action. Just make sure to use our promo code Believe. That's B. L-E-A-V for your 50% free bet credit on your first deposit up to $250. Bet online. The game starts here. All right, folks. So Falcons offensive line. We're going to dive in right now to this group. And we'll start. I kind of have it organized in like tackles versus outside guys. But, um, you know, in terms of the tackle group, the two starters, I don't think there's a lot of question marks at this point surrounding these guys. Um. It's going to be Jake Matthews at left tackle like it has been for basically every, you know, year since he was drafted. <laughs> Jake Matthews, the model of consistency at left tackle. And, you know, last year, I guess maybe, you know, a down year by his standards. He was still an, an excellent pass protector. That's never really been an issue with him. Um, I think Matthews has been pretty exceptional uh, as a pass blocker his entire career here in Atlanta still finishes with a 71 overall PFF grade really good it, it was a down year for him from like a run blocking standpoint but it kind of was for the Falcons offensive group as a whole it was just they did not run the ball anywhere near as well as they should have it, it was kind of bizarre and I think we all know you know it, it, the whole situation just wasn't great right like the, the the run game got stale in terms of scheme the blocking kind of fell off a bit they, the Falcons needed to be more they needed to be more diverse with their run concepts and I think they will now do start be, begin to do those things um but you know as it stood it wasn't a great setup for anyone but I think Jake Matthews weathered it well finished with over an 80 pass blocking grade I think you you watch the tape you can see he's just a really reliable rock solid left tackle um and that, that'll be really beneficial the other thing with Jake Matthews is he's an iron man you know this is a guy that has played almost every game of his every available game of his career going back to 2014. He is a guy that really takes care of his body, uh, consummate professional there. So love Jake Matthews love that he gets to go from, you know, a pretty good left tackle situation in Minnesota to a pretty good left tackle situation here in Atlanta. That should be a smooth transition. You don't have to worry about Kirk getting annihilated off his blind side here in Atlanta. That will go a long way to, to giving Kirk cousins a, a, a good platform <laughs> to begin his career here and, and really, take off in that regard so i'm excited uh to see jake matthews once again hopefully he can bounce back in the run game a bit uh he is you know entering his what will be his you know age 32 season essentially so um he's getting up there a bit but we've seen tackles play well into their mid-30s and i think jake is probably going to be one of those guys that ages pretty gracefully so excited to see uh jake matthews this year the next guy obviously is caleb mcgarry and you know I think Caleb McGarry is a more 
enigmatic figure in the Falcons fan base, right? Um, but no matter like what you think about Caleb McGarry, like he had one of his stronger seasons as a pass blocker last year. He's never been a tremendous pass blocker. I think last year he was average to above average, right? He was not an issue in pass protection. I think that's key um, that he just, he just can't be an issue in pass protection. If he can be average to above average there combined with his run blocking prowess, it, it did take a step back from his 2022 where he was like one of the NFL's best run blocking tackles. Um, I think, you know, if the pass blocking is good, that's going to be the most important thing. Like the Falcons are still going to need to run the ball effectively. It's not going to be as critical as it was under Arthur Smith, where if like the Falcons couldn't run, then they were just completely screwed. Um, I think McGarry's pass blocking is going to become more into focus now in this scheme. I'm sure they'll still continue to do things to help him out there. Not expect him to be this great Island guy out there on the right side. But I do think that he's, he rose to the challenge last year. I think he can continue to play well. Uh, at right tackle, I, I think he's a bit underrated overall. You know, I, I think if he has another season, if he can improve on last year, then I, I think we won't be talking about are the Falcons going to look to save cap by moving on from McGarry? Uh, because at this point, you know, next year, he I think the Falcons could save, you know, 10, 12 plus million by moving on from McGarry in 2025. But I don't think they'll be rushing to do that if he has a season like last year or plays even better than last year because like you don't want to open up problems on your offensive line when you're bringing in a quarterback like Kirk Cousins who needs the protection to be there and a quarterback like Michael Penix who's dealt with a lot of injuries. You don't want him getting hit either. So keeping two reliable tackles there I think would be smart for the future. But you know in terms of Caleb McGarry, I think he has improved as a pass blocker. It's pretty clear. I hope he can continue that trajectory. And if he does, then this this tackle group will be in pretty good shape going forward um moving on to like the depth guys at tackle the falcons kind of got they kind of found i think their depth tackles last year and we'll see if if those guys continue to prove themselves in camp the falcons have brought in a ton of competition in this group um they've basically cleared cleared out a lot of the guys from last year they did bring back barry wesley once again as kind of he was one of their um, XFL guys, I believe, from the year before. He stuck around on the, the practice squad for most of the season. He is back. Falcons also brought in Ryan Cole uh, and just recently signed two more tackles in Andrew Stuber and Jared Jones-Smith, who was a standout from the UFL this year. Um, but to me, I think it's kind of, I think the Falcons have probably their two tackles that they like already. I think Storm Norton is probably a shoe in to beat swing tackle. He had to come in for Kayla McGarry last year and, and filled in quite well. I know, you know, we were pretty concerned with Storm Norton given like his past and, and struggles. Uh, but he came in for the Falcons played close to 300 snaps and was like average to above average, like, which is, that's what you want from your swing tackle. If you can get average to above average play from your swing tackle, you're pretty happy considering that the previous year when he had to come in, you know, the previous couple of years when he played a lot, it was, you know, below average at, at best. So, you know, Storm Norton is a guy that, that has played a lot of NFL football, seems to finally kind of found his sort of niche as, as a versatile swing tackle. I think he's the guy that's going to win that job. And then, you know, Tyler Vrabel, he had to come in and play left tackle for a game um, when the Falcons had all those injuries back to back. And, you know, I think, I think it's, it's, a situation where he didn't play a ton, but when he had to come in and play left tackle, he did it and he was average. Like he was actually a good pass protector uh, and did not look out of place. So he played 60 snaps only and he played that one game, but that one game was solid. And I think if that's your fourth tackle, you're, you're that's encouraging. Like we saw him play in a tough spot and, and come in and play well. And so I think you're probably like, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to be happy with that. Um, pretty happy to, to have obviously Tyler Vrabel uh, available for that role. So I, I think those two are kind of the, the heavy favorites for the roster at this point, but we'll see, you know, I think Jared Jones Smith just had a great year in the UFL. He was one of the top linemen in the UFL. You know, I think Barry Wesley stuck around. So he's someone I think the team likes. Then we got Ryan Cole, who's been around the NFL for a couple of years. And, and again, Andrew Stuber as well. So we'll see if any of those guys sort of stake their claim and, and, and get above Tyler Vrabel for that that final tackle spot potentially or practice you know these guys could also be in the mix for the practice squad so 
you know, I think that group in particular is a strong one. Like, uh, I, and you know, I think the Falcons offensive line as a whole is strong, but it's really, I think it's, it's pretty telling that we feel good about this tackle group and the depth too. And like, it, you're not usually going to get a swing tackle that you're like, oh, this guy is like a plus starter if he comes in. That's pretty rare to see. And I don't think that's the case at this stage, but I think you feel good about this tackle depth as a whole. I think this is a group that is reliable. You can trust this group for the most part. It, we'll hope there's not too many injuries. If it, you know, No injuries would be best, obviously, but um, I think if Storm Norton or Tyler Vrabel have to come in, you know, I think you're going to be you're going to be okay. I think we're going to see this offense be able to, to weather that. And that's basically all you're asking for from your depth offensive lineman in the NFL these days. So uh, moving on to the interior group, the three starters are going to return from last year at this stage. Um, left guard, Matthew Bergeron, probably the most interesting of the group, right? In terms of talking about. And Bergeron came in last year, uh, changed positions to play on the interior and also changed um, from the right to the left side. So big transition for, for Bergeron coming in. I think, you know, we saw him play decently. I think he was sort of an average starter. Um, and you know, I, I think some people were obviously hoping for more from a high pick, but you have to understand rookie offensive lineman coming in, you know, it, it's tough. It's a tough assignment for, for those guys to be able to, hit the ground running, you know, so to speak. So I think with Bergeron, his season as being like roughly an average offensive lineman was pretty expected. He did basically play every single snap through all uh, 17 games. And that's nothing to shake a stick at either. Um, We did see, I think, Bergeron, you know, have some struggles here and there. We also saw a couple of really good games, including an elite game, I think, against New Orleans in week 12, where he was just like completely lights out. Um, you know, he, he did allow six sacks, allowed 19 hurries, you know, it 33 total pressures, right? Not great, but not terrible either. Um, and I think another year to get acclimated to the inside, another year to get sort of acclimated to the left side, right? Um, I think this is the guy that I'm expecting if this offensive line, you know, I was just talking about it on Twitter last week where a lot of people are ranking the Falcons offensive line in the top five. I think, you know, sharp football stats had them as the second ranked offensive line. I'm like, wow, that's pretty aggressive. Um, But I think the people that are thinking that are sort of taking into account that Matthew Bergeron is going to take a step forward from everything we've heard from camp. There's a lot of confidence in him doing that, that he's kind of one of those pieces that this team is sort of really expecting to sort of elevate um, this year to, to, to raise the offense into that next tier, um, both in terms of run and pass blocking. So I think if, if Bergeron can become an above average starter this year, that does take the offensive line into that high level territory that these guys are talking about. And, um, I would love to see it. I think Bergeron's a really interesting player, obviously a very young player. We'll see how quickly he can make that acclimation. Right. Um, but I think having the extra year in the system, uh, going now into his second year, this is this is a frequent time for these offensive linemen to start to play a lot better. It's really hard for these guys to have a high level of success as a rookie. Um, second year, much more likely to see that jump. So I, I am excited to see what Bergeron can do in 2024. I think he's kind of one of those pieces that is, is critical to this offensive line being as good or better than expected for most people. At center, this is, I think, one of the guys that is more polarizing among the fan base in Drew Dahlman. I think Dahlman, as a whole, has been pretty good, especially in the run game. You know, we know he's been one of the one of the NFL's best run-blocking centers, um, and, and last year was sort of no different. I think he had, like, one of the highest run-blocking grades of any center. The pass-blocking has been inconsistent. Um, we know that, you know, he's he only allowed two sacks last year, so that's not terrible. Um, but, you know, with Dahlman... You're hoping that the pass blocking just if he can get that to like an average level, that'll help a lot because he is a, he is an elite run blocker and and the Falcons are going to be continuing to to ask him to do that. I think we could see a lot more uh, utilization of these interior guys in the run game. I think the Falcons view Dalman as that potential like big piece in the middle that can help this offensive line really take the next step. 
Um, and this is a contract year for Dalman. You know, I, I think he's on track to get paid by somebody, but I don't think the Falcons will be the one to pay him unless that pass blocking really comes along because it, the, you need this center to be able to pass block. Kirk Cousins is very vulnerable to that interior pressure. Um, it's going to have to be a point of emphasis for him this year. I, I have a lot of confidence in him to be able to get that done um, to at least kind of elevate himself into that like average range of pass blocking. Um, and, you know, it, to be fair to him, like he has dabbled in that, you know, I think in 2022 was a little bit better, but 2023 was when he really became this elite sort of run blocker. Um, and, you know, 2021, he looked good too, but it was a very limited sample size. So I'm excited to see Drew Dahlman in 2024. I think that he will take another step. Um, I don't think he'll ever be this great pass blocking center, but if he can continue to run block at an elite level, that'll be probably enough uh, for this offensive line to to stay on that, um, especially when he's playing next to someone like Chris Lindstrom, who, like at this point, we all know Chris Lindstrom, right? Um, I mean, it. Chris Lindstrom is just outstanding. Um, I think he's cemented himself as one of the top two, three guards in the NFL. You know, you can argue about the, the ranking of that, but just an outstanding run blocker, complete full package, very, very good pass protector as well. Um, I think Chris Lindstrom is just an absolutely core piece on this offensive line that is going to be like one of the the foundations of this group for, for many years to come, you know, building around his skills. Again, this is why I think we might see the team lean more on some inside runs, some more duo, you know, Chris Lindstrom can certainly pull and get out there and, and, um, do a lot of stuff that more than, more than just outside zone. Right. Um, I think he's versatile. I think he can do all kinds of stuff for this team. I'm really excited to see, uh, how the Falcons sort of adjust this offensive line and make some adjustments to the offense, make it a little less predictable. And that's going to help everyone look good. Um, and I think Chris Lindstrom could really benefit from that too. Uh, but I, I think, having Lindstrom at left guard is obviously a huge boost. You know, having one of the best young left guards in the NFL, uh, or excuse me, right guard, right guard, Chris Lindstrom. Uh, I think it's exciting. Uh, I, I'm excited to see what the Falcons could do. I think that right side, once again, has the potential to be, you know, this tremendous run blocking force. I think if Bergeron can take that next step too, you know, that will help the left side also have some more of that ability. Um, but I think, you know, you're looking at this starting five, and you're, you're hoping for Dalman to become a better pass blocker. That's one part. But, like, really, we're looking at Matthew Bergeron, right? Like, Bergeron needs to take the next step to being an above-average starter, especially given the investment there. I think if he does that, then I think the the claims that this could be one of the NFL's best offensive lines are, are legitimate. And I think that's something that Kirk Cousins never really had in Minnesota. I, I think he had a good left tackle, obviously, with Christian Derrissaw, but... The whole group in Minnesota was just never that high level. Um, they'd certainly had some players on that group, but they never had the starting five together really at the same time that that would have elevated them into like a top offensive line level. And I think at this stage of his career, Kirk Cousins kind of needs that. So I think the Falcons have invested a lot in this group into making this group sort of a core piece of the offense. And I think this is the year, I'm hoping, that we really see that pan out, that we see this group become the face, one of the faces of the offensive, Kirk Cousin, the offensive line, and the skill group kind of all come together to make this a, a premier unit in the NFL. And I think the offensive line's play will have a lot to do with that. If this offense really hits the ground running, really takes off, I, I think the offensive line's going to have a lot to do with that, maybe more than some people think. And and I think that uh, the offensive system is, is a big part of that as well. So excited to see those starting five come together. In terms of the depth, on the interior, there's definitely a few guys to touch on. Again, like last year, I feel like this team kind of found their depth guys, right? I think Ryan Newsel, Newsflash, finally got an opportunity to play in a regular season game. Comes in at center um, for for Dalman, who had to miss some time. Plays pretty well, right? Like a, he's sort of an average starter. That's kind of what you're looking for uh, from those guys, right? I think Newsel was solid in that action. Um, so I, I'm happy to see him finally get out there and and have some success and then i think in terms of the other guys you know kyle hinton is another person the team brought back another veteran who's played kind of up and down the offensive line again he was solid when he had to play a game um in reserve 
graded out pretty much average, but was actually quite good at pass blocking, which probably more important in this scheme than the run blocking, especially given, you know, some of the stuff we've, <laughs> some of the stuff that we saw with Arthur Smith, the run, the run game was su such an emphasis. I think it's going to be more pass focused now, especially given Kirk Cousins. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to have Kyle Hinton here as depth too. He's still just 26 as well. So another, you know, relatively young guy that, that could be a long-term death piece here. Um, the Falcons also continued to bring guys in, right? I mean, Jovan Gwynn, last year's seventh round pick, he's sort of stuck around the team. I think he's their developmental center. Um, you know, I don't, I, it's kind of a tough situation for him to make the roster. Once again, they kind of carved out an extra space for him. He might be more of a practice squad guy. We'll see. Um, you know, obviously him transitioning from guard to center, that takes some time. He is undersized even for center in the NFL. Um, so it's a tough spot, but I, I think they just really like him and he seems to be an easy guy to like, so I, I don't blame him. Um, but we'll see if he's able to stick around, if he's able to carve out a depth role on this depth chart. Um, and then the other guy on the interior is, is John the glue who does have some, does have some NFL experience has been around a bit. So he's another guy that's going to factor in to this depth competition, potentially practice squad conversations as well. We'll see how it shakes out, but I, I like, I like this group as a whole. I think they've got some guys here um, that are, that are worth watching and worth monitoring. And then I think the starting three, you know, are, are really, really intriguing, especially Bergeron like that. Again, Bergeron taking the next step, becoming that above average starter is, is key to this team really finding their footing on offensive line and becoming that sort of top offensive line that we're all really hoping that they do become this year. Um, and that's, that's sort of it. That's the main guys on this offensive line. I think it's, I think the, this is one of the simpler groups to, you know, I, some of these shows you'll hear, you'll, they'll go for like an hour, right? There's a lot to get to. I think the offensive line is pretty straightforward for the Falcons this year, which is a good thing. You know, they've got the starting five pretty much settled. They, they've they got their top depth guys in the building, you know, and we'll see how, how it progresses, how, if they sort of do some shifting, if they bring in some more guys, obviously we'll probably have to, we'll probably have to, you know, I have to deal with some injuries at some point. It's nice to have the depth. It's nice to have guys uh, on the practice squad that you can call up. So we'll see how many depth guys they keep, who they keep in terms of the depth and the top five, you know, starters. But the consistency is really nice. I hope we get to see this unit continue to grow together and, and really become a, a strength of the team. Um, and hopefully the quarterback play will put them in more positions to succeed this year as opposed to, uh, well, last year, right? Um, so... Looking forward to that. Um, I think for once we're going to have maybe some strong offensive line play in the preseason. That's been a constant issue for this team in years past. So I feel pretty good about the second team offensive line this year, actually. I think that'll, that'll actually be pretty solid. So um, thank you guys for tuning in to Dirty Birds and Brews today. Uh, we're in the midst of our roster preview series. Next up, we're going to transition over to the defensive side. Going to have Jordan Watkins uh, making a return appearance to the show. Uh, to go over the defensive line, uh, which is, of course, his specialty little trench talk throwback there for you guys. Um, so we'll be doing that next week. Uh, so look forward to that one. And then, of course, uh, we'll have more of these roster previews coming your way as we get closer and closer to training camp. In the meantime, guys, thank you so much for watching Dirty Birds and Brews. Please like, subscribe if you haven't done that already. Leave us that five-star review on your podcast platform of choice. And yeah, check out the Patreon, check out the YouTube channel memberships. We're going to be firing up the Falcons uh, Patron Fantasy League soon. I know those are always very popular. So if you want to get in on those, sign up uh, at the Patreon or on the channel memberships. Uh, and yeah, check out the community Discord server if you want to get involved in that off-season talk. I know that's going to be starting to pop off as we get closer to training camp as well. But in the meantime, guys, enjoy uh, your your pre-football bliss or, or not bliss. Maybe you're really itching for it. That's what we're here for. Uh, until next time, guys, we'll see you once again on the Dirty Birds and Brews podcast coming up real soon. Have a great day, folks. Thanks.